Hey everybody, today we received a long-awaited package straight from Kamchatka. We open it. Inside we see bottles of ice and Kamchatka crab. It was difficult to get it because we got it whole. It weighs about four kilograms. Let's open her up. When folded up, it's not that big. If you straighten his little legs, you can immediately see that this is a monster that was taken from the bottom of the ocean. There are many types of crabs, but there's usually not much to eat in them. And there's a lot of meat in this one. Therefore, it is considered the most expensive in the world. Our crab costs $220. It's already boiled. We need to get the meat out of it. We tear off the shell. We tear off the gills. And begin to unscrew the legs. We do this carefully because the spikes are pretty sharp. We pull out the remaining pieces of meat from the shell and we get a whole mountain of crab legs. They need to be broken at the joints. This should be done with each of its legs. Now we take one leg, cut it lengthwise with scissors, and take out a nice, whole, real crab stick. We throw the meat into the bowl. After about 20 minutes, we got all the meat from the crab. Now, there are $220 in this bowl. In this form, we can finally eat the crab. It tastes kind of like crawfish, only twice as saturated, and the meat is juicier. Let's cook three completely different crab dishes. First up, Crab's Benedict. We'll need pieces of crab, broken into fibers, all transferred into a bowl. We take a small green onion, cut it into circles, and put it with the crab. Put a grater on top and zest a lemon into this. Cut the lemon in half and squeeze out some juice. Olive oil and chili pepper. A little salt. Now mix it up and our filling is ready. We put a saucepan with water on the stove. Let's salt the water, pour in two tablespoons of vinegar, Break the egg into a cup. When the water starts to boil, we quickly stir it in a circle with a whisk to make a whirlpool. In the middle, in one movement, pour in the egg. Cook that for 20 seconds. We take this out with a slotted spoon and put it onto a paper towel. Now we're going to need two of those poached eggs. Now let's make a hollandaise sauce. To do this, we separate the egg yolk from the egg whites. only need the yolk, or rather four yolks. We put them onto a steam bath and mix quickly. After 15 seconds, we remove it. Pour in a little vinegar and oil in a thin, thin stream and mix. Gradually, this mass thickens. It remains to add salt and pour it into a saucepan. We put the grill pan back on the stove and fry two of these buns on both sides until crisp. We put the buns on a plate, put the crab meat with dressing on top of them, level it, then our poached eggs. Now pour hollandaise sauce on top. And finally, you need to sprinkle all this with paprika. Our crab benedict is ready. We cut into the egg, and the yolk breaks as needed. Let's try it. Oh, it's fun.
fucking delicious. Crispy toast, runny yolk, hollandaise sauce, and crab. A real royal breakfast. Next up, tom yum. All right, the ingredients we need are crab, scallops, and shrimp. Coconut milk, tom yum paste, fish bouillon granules, fish sauce, oyster sauce, and cherry tomatoes. We open the bonito konzashi, pour the granules into the pan. Pour in two liters of boiling water and mix that so that the granules dissolve. This will give us a nice fish broth. Turn on the stove, bring the broth to a boil, and open the coconut milk. Although it looks more like a paste, we put all this into the pot. and to mix it up. Now our soup has turned white. So add fish sauce, a tablespoon of oyster sauce, and most importantly, tom yam paste. This contains all the Thai spices we need. We throw in a couple of spoons to the soup. Mix it up. Now for the seafood. Scallops, peeled shrimp, and Kamchatka crab. Cut the cherry tomatoes in half and drop those into the soup. We'll mix this for the last time and the crab tom yum is ready. We collect it into a ladle and fill our bowl up. Finally chop the greens and sprinkle them on top. Let's taste test it. Ooh, this is one of the most intense soups I've ever eaten. Such a powerful, spicy soup with lots of seafood. For the third course, whole crab legs are needed. We cut these into pieces, which will be convenient to eat. Throw those into a bowl and top those with a couple of tablespoons of plain flour. Cover this with a flat plate and shake well. Open it up. All the pieces should be evenly covered with flour. Now let's put a frying pan on to heat. Pour in quite a lot of oil and put in our pieces to fry. Fry them on both sides to form a crispy crust. Remove the pan from the stove and drop the pieces into a deep bowl. Now let's open the oyster sauce. We'll pour that on top, cover with a plate, and shake again. That's it, done. You can serve the crab pieces on a plate. This is a super sweet and sour crab. You can sprinkle it with green onions. And now, it's definitely ready. Let's taste it. This is a very elite snack, and it clearly tastes like it. Inside, we have juicy crab, a crust of flour, and a thin layer of oyster glaze on it. In general, I'm pretty delighted with this crab cake. Of all of the sea creatures like him that I've tried, whether it's lobster or shrimp or crayfish, Kamchatka crab is definitely the most delicious. All right, guys, if you want me to cook some unusual inhabitant of the ocean, then like this video. And as soon as we get 300,000 likes, we'll do just that. And if we get 500,000 likes, then we'll have a very large ocean dweller. Everything is in your hands. Write us in the comments, what do you think I'm planning to cook? See you guys soon. Hey everybody, there's not a single person among my subscribers who has not tried a bounty bar at least once in his life. Today, we will prepare a bounty bar of a simply incredible size. Let's see what the original bar consists of. Outside, we see milk chocolate and inside coconut filling. We go to the store for all the groceries we need. The first thing you need to take is a lot of chocolate.
we have 150 chocolate bars in the cart. Coconut shavings. You need a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. 20 kilograms. 9 kilograms of sugar. Citric acid. Coconut oil. Basically, that's it. Now we can head to the checkout. The check came out to $390. Let's start with the fact that we have a big sheet of wood. Using a ruler and a pencil, we draw everything. By hand, we round the corners. We have drawn the bounty form. Now we just need to cut it out with an electric jigsaw. Done. Now we take the plastic wrap and wrap it. We take three boxes of milk chocolates and a bowl. We crush the chocolate bars on the table, open them, and shake out the already broken pieces of chocolate into the bowl. We continue until the bowl is filled. Done. We put water in a saucepan. and put that on the stove. Then the bowl of chocolate on top. Now we melt everything in a steam bath, stirring occasionally. Chocolate is porous, so when it melts, it greatly decreases in volume. We add more. We put the melted chocolate on a board. We put the mold on the table and we pour in the chocolate in portions. And smear it around. All until we cover the entire surface of the mold. Now we take a huge saucepan and all the coconut shavings that we bought. We open each pack and pour it into the bowl. Done! There's almost 20 kilograms of coconut shavings in the saucepan. Now you need 4 kilograms of coconut oil. We open the jars and put them in there as well. Done. But now we need sugar and citric acid. We'll cook the syrup in two pots. We open a pack of sugar, measure 300 grams on the kitchen scale, and pour that into a pan. And in the second, 300 grams, water is also needed. Measure 130 milliliters and pour it into the sugar. Now turn the stove on high and just wait until the syrup is cooked. Be sure to use a thermometer. As soon as the temperature has reached 107 degrees, we rearrange the pots, add a little citric acid, and mix. We take a three liter jar and pour our syrup into it. Between each new batch of syrup, we wash the pan from the previous batch. Again, we measure everything and cook. And keep repeating this. Done. 
Only one jar is filled. This isn't enough. After another four hours, we cooked eight liters of syrup. Now we just need to pour the syrup into the saucepan and mix. But then I realized that there would be very little filling. So we bought another 50 kilograms of coconut shavings, 10 liters of coconut oil, and 20 liters of glucose syrup from the store. All this cost $315. By the way, playing with the syrup in the bag is a great stress reliever. It is the fucking best. Pour one jar of the syrup into a saucepan. We open the glucose syrup and fill the jar with it to understand how much we will add. Pour the first three liters. Then another one and a half. Now you need to mix all this with your hands so that all the coconut shavings are soaked with syrup and oil. The mass is heavy and thick, so it's hard to mix. But after 20 minutes, I mixed it all the way through. Our chocolate has been frozen for a long time. We take the coconut filling out and dump it into the mold. Evenly distribute the mass with your hands. And pack it in. We open the bag of coconut shavings, pour most of it into a saucepan. This time we make a small crater in the coconut shavings. And that's where we pour into our syrup. And then the glucose syrup. We open the canister with coconut oil and pour out four liters. This oil is liquidy because it was in hot water. Again, we knead it all together, this time with four hands. Then we pour out the contents of the pan. And spread it around. Now we just need to make the final third batch Put it into the mold as well. It will have to be leveled more carefully so that the shape of the bar looks like a bounty. At first we did it all with our hands and then we carefully patted it with a board. Done after two hours of hard work on the molding. We got what we needed. We take all the remaining chocolates, crush them on the table, open them up, and throw them back into the bowl. And into a steam bath. When all the chocolate has become liquid, pour it over the bar, and smear it around with a spatula. Then pour out the second bowl of chocolate.
cover up all the gaps. And finally, the third bowl. I ran out of all the chocolate that I bought. I had to go to the store again and buy a lot more chocolate bars. This cost us $192. The chocolate that flowed down the sides of the bar, we collected from the bottom back into the bowl. We'll just melt it down again. That's how many chocolates we have to crush. To speed up the process, we use two bowls. Done. We send them to the steam bath. We wait until it melts, and we break more. And we're left with two full bowls of hot chocolate. But that's not all. We take the oil, and we add a lot of it to each bowl. Thanks to the oil, the chocolate will become more liquidy. We mix everything well, and pour it into the bar mold. Just look at how beautifully the chocolate fits. Pour out the second bowl of chocolate. And distribute it. Even more chocolate now. We tried to make little curlies on top, like on a bounty bar, but it didn't work out well enough to make them beautiful, so we poured the final bowl of chocolate on top to smooth out all the irregularities. After three days of work until two in the morning, our huge bounty bar is finally ready. After counting all the things that we used, it turned out that this mega monster weighs 134 kilograms, and there are 643,000 calories in this bar. That's a lot. Let's finally cut it. The chocolate layer is carefully cut with a hacksaw, and for the filling, I bought a hefty machete. We cut through the bar. The whole filling in the bar is uniform, as is in the original. Taking into account all additional purchases, our bounty bar costs $903. Let's cut off a small piece and try our huge bounty. Mm, you know, it doesn't taste like what it looks like. It just tastes like a bounty. <laughs> 